journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Good afternoon, everyone. Basil Chapman sitting here for Larry's Hour. Larry can't make it, and I thought this was an appropriate time. There were a lot of things that I didn't get to do in my show. The Tiger Technician's Hour, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock Eastern Time, each uh, market day. And uh, I should also mention my service is the opening call daily newsletter. So I had a question about Wells Fargo. So Wells Fargo Money Center Bank is in leg C. Oh, let me just show you this for a moment, just to, for those of you who are new to my work. I make it very simple. I try to identify the lowest low bar. I use technical analysis for that. Then I count each successively higher peak, alphabetize them sequentially, uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down, A through G. It's A, B, C, D is the fourth highest peak. It can go higher, but D is the, the object going from a buy signal to a buy mode means that you should get to at least four higher peaks. A is the first, B is the second, C is the third, D is the fourth. And what we're looking at here in Wells Fargo is done a D off the channel. We've instant restart. Uh, I don't have to understand that right now. But it's uh, where the D immediately after that, within three bars, it goes to a higher high. That goes E slash A, and it can be a brand new buy mode going all the way to another four peaks. is a great technique. Well, we went to a D in the uh, daily. Then we popped up a little bit higher to an all-time high of 74.70. I'm looking for round numbers. Yes, 73 was a round number on the uh, – on the 15th, and that says that if this goes over 73, you can look for slightly higher prices. Well, it has done that, so that's important. So we've gone to an E right here in the daily chart. We've gone to only a B in the, I can call that an alternate account, but I don't see any reason why I shouldn't call it a B right now in the weekly chart, and a C in the monthly. You should go to a D. Remember the last D? Look at that sharp pullback from about a 60 all the way down to the 35 level. That's quite a pullback. So, yes, it's in a buy mode and it looks very strong. All the money center banks are looking good. And I've been for subscribers. We are in money center bank, but we're also in the IW, the um, KRE, which are the KRE is the regional banks because they were the laggards. And the regional banks have gone to that missing leg D in the weekly chart, monthly chart gone to a leg D in the month in the weekly chart so daily is in at a C and it's sort of stores might be an alternate count but it's holding very nicely it's down 47 cents at 64.86 let me get to um, so I'm talking about the relationship of the big financials the XLF that's the, the S&P select financial sector that's XLF let me just show you the chart right here look how strong that's been <clears throat> Stalling at the 50.14 all-time high just recently, trying to test it and it went below it. Now it's at 49.41. Uh, uh, the weekly chart is still very strong, and the monthly chart's in the leg D, so it's accomplished all it needs to. And I had said, I believe that you'll see the rotation between with the webinar that I just did the other day was talking about that relationship that the biggies should now see the smallies. In other words, I don't think they're really small. The KRE, the regional banks, you can get some pretty big billion-dollar companies, but it is the small in relation to the money center banks. So here you've got the S&P regional banking ETF holding very well. I use moving averages. Larry is anathema to Larry. He has fantastic techniques. He does not use moving averages. I do look at that nine way above the 14. That is strength. So that is so far is very good. So we're seeing the small, smaller banks, that's the regionals, start to benefit. You see the same thing with the S&P. So you can go SPX.X right there. S&P all-time high on the uh, 11th uh, of November at 60, 17.31. 
pulling back. It's at 58.85 right now, down 31. Uh, just going sideways, but uh, we got to see if this becomes a spring-loaded move to back, gap up to the upside tomorrow, or that we gap down. It's going to be really a big test, but you've already got your D in the weekly chart. What I wanted to say is that the relationship of the S&P 500 to the IWM has been my focus for a while. So we've been along the IWM since the August low. <clears throat> And most importantly, it got to a D at 242.39 on the 12th of November. It's pulled back quite sharply, but the 9 is still holding really well. But it is a D so far, a D in the weekly chart. So we analyzed D in the monthly chart with a double top 244.46. November of 2021 goes all the, the number of issues that have gone back to within pennies, within less than a dollar after a huge 30, 40, 50 percent decline is just incredible. And that's that double top that we look at. So it went to 242.39, uh, just about two points away from the all time high. I think it will still get to that all time high, but it better do the start doing the next move up to the 233, 235 area very, very soon. So what I want you to do is just to show you gold is having a big move up here. It's up 22 at 2653. Uh, we were in gold for a gold stock for a while. It did OK, but it really was lagging the gold itself. So we got out of it, waited and waited. And the other day we got back in, but we got back into the physical gold um, Essentially, it's a unit, and um, that's doing very nicely now. It's got a leg A to the upside, a gray A because the technicals really haven't confirmed even a buy signal yet. I call it a gray A. It goes blue when it's in fugo. All right, so that's a good sign. The weekly chart, look at that big pullback from the 2800 2800 down to the 2500 area, 2540 area, and then what happens is that the nine period moving average barely moves down. That's a really good sign. That says like a cork in water. There's a chance that it could pop right up again. And this time I'm seeing it as a kind of, um, I think it's more a market participant before. Before I was talking about it as a Middle East, what happens for, for thousands of years when there's a conflagration in the Middle East, gold, gold benefits. And that kind of fizzled uh, after the uh, Trump election, uh, Trump win. And then what we saw was a big pullback, but I think it's still in play. And in the monthly chart, we've got a leg C, and it should go to a D. So, so far, I'm looking at gold as being positive through, it's a kind of a different area altogether, because look, the uh, Bitcoin, and we've been long Bitcoin for some time, Bitcoin is, for my opening call subscribers, is at 94785 up 1,725 at an all-time high. I, I don't want to go through all the different patterns. I talk about the, this is a cup and handle pattern, uh, the old traditional one, not one of my favorite patterns, but it's a cup and handle pattern nevertheless. This is a, what I call the plumb line, where you try to identify the lowest low and see if the number of bars on the left can equal the number of bars on the right, getting back to where it was. It's done that. So this is still very positive. Um, in the monthly chart, and I've got it only as a leg C in the weekly, it should still go to a D. So this is acting well. Basil Chapman sitting in for the one and only Larry Pesavento. I'll be back in a few moments, and there are a number of people who ask me questions, and I'll get to them as soon as I reach out. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. 
Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Folks, Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pizzaventus. Now, I just wanted to finish up with Wells Fargo. WFC is the symbol is down 19 cents in 73.24. So I look at things, there's a narrow rectangle. I have a whole litany of, of what to look at when you have a long, narrow rectangle. And then there's a the large rectangle. And here's the large rectangle. And what we've got is just a fractional high above the previous high, that peak D that was made back around about the 9th, was it? Uh, there's 6 of November at 74.27. Well, we pulled back and then we ran up to a gray A and then an E slash B, just as fractionally higher high as 74.70 three days ago. Now, this is a pattern that I always look at very closely because in the rectangle, this is a largish, a widish rectangle. What I usually look for is if there a sharp pullback within two bars, it just pulls back sharply, makes a little flagpole, and then it it either doesn't go into the gap or it, it gaps up to do that. And then it doesn't fill the gap at all. It just it barely touches it or doesn't take it out at all. And then starts to make higher highs and higher lows. It can go to four higher peaks within that rectangle. But if it goes very sharply higher, then the pattern I look at is the arch formation. And that's different altogether. That has completely different uh, connotations. It says if this goes up and then pulls back and closes halfway in the rectangle, and my eye says the rectangle halfway would be around about 72.28. Uh, if it closes under 72.28, be ready for a test of the low, and that can take you back to 70. So it makes it really imperative in the next two to three sessions that's by monday at the latest 75s it has to hit the 75s otherwise it's into a consolidation phase even though the the weekly chart is extremely positive and the and the one three that's the way i'm looking at it. so i just wanted to finish that up for zip in the den uh, next question i had was um I had. I, oh, I wanted to show you something this is on a very short term basis remember these are techniques that they, they apply to one minute charts, look, one minute chart, there's your peak D, there's your pullback below the 200 period moving area, Larry hates 200 period moving, actually just doesn't use that. And look at this, how important it is to me. And each one of us has our own techniques. But I mentioned this earlier on, I said, if this trend line can hold, we were over here. And I said, if this trend line holds, 
we could have a good rally. Well, we did. And then we went to a peak C in the five-minute chart of the E-mini, S&P. Then it pulled back, held that line, ran up again. Now it's taking it out. And that's really important. Look, here's a trend line. It's just really important. It's, the, it's a 10-minute chart. You have to wait for a confirmation that it actually closes under it. But that's what I was saying before. Watch this trend line I mentioned, I typed into the den, the Chapman Wave, Chapman Wave inside track. What I do is I take, I join um, any arch or any higher highs or any lower lows, and I say, well, this is your inside track. If it like a three sixteenths of an inch or a sixteenth, just a very narrow channel. And if that support holds, then it acts like a springboard. In this case, it went under it, but if it breaks above it again, that's really important because it could become a springboard. So that's what I, it's easy techniques. The nine period moving average went pink, went green, pink is negative because the nine's under the 14, green is positive. Okay, so I want you to just go through that quickly. Um, couple of things now. So I wrote down what I want to look at. So I want you to look at the currencies. You've got the dollar going very strongly higher, and it broke this little mini, uh, I call it a Chapman Wave falling axe formation. We make lower highs and much lower lows, and then you just break out to the upside. That means you can test the left side high. In this case, it would be the recovery high of the 14th of November of 107.06. This suggests that it's going to try for that to go to a leg C. That is the dollar. In the uh, EUR, USD, the euro dollar currency pair, it's the exact opposite. We've come to the downside. This could be F slash B on the troughs to the downside. Uh, it takes that out, it goes to a, a, another leg down, and you can see this huge move down. I've got this as a Fibonacci. I usually put them in, then I take them out. I use them, but I only use them when I need them. So that would be that Fibonacci. I'm going to get rid of it right now. More important to me is the lowercase h. They can go to a lowercase m. The dreaded H is successful so far. And now it can go to, and if especially if it's the second one, this is the lowercase h that so looks like an m. It's taken out the left side low uh, right there. But now the most important one is this one right here. That is a uh, weekly chart. It's the week of the 6th of October of 2023, 1.05999. Take that out. And all of a sudden, you've got emptiness over this. Oh, so this is a really important phase right now for the euro. Um, and now we're going to go to the USD JPY. That is the yen. Whoops, JPY. Uh, this is the dollar yen currency pair. So you've got a cup formation. And let me just draw this. We'll see if it works out. Uh, all we're doing is using technical analysis to try to identify a low and you can see from the steepness of the move down to the steepness of to the lack of steepness to the way up, it looks steep, but not if you think of it on the way down. If I had to use this plumb line, uh, it's going to be really tough to get to the high. So what I do is I start off looking at the plumb line. That is the number of bars on the left could equal the number of bars on the right. And I'll, I'll draw it in, but this isn't the one that I would use because it's just – way too low. So here we are, we go from here to here. And then a cup formation, or a V-shape formation, and to the right, green on the way up, and pink on the way down. And then I go for a Chapman wave inside wedge, target repellent line. All I do is join line, but I have specific rules, and that takes me to there. And then I usually make a dash green. These are all techniques that I use over and over and over and over again. So greeny green right there, dash, because it's just a suggestion of a trend line. And that, to me, this is a little bit too soon. But it says, in this case, it says by the week of, oh, as a weekly chart, the week of the 6th of December, there should be a test of the high that was made on the 5th of July which is 161.95. We're trading six points lower at 155.37. I'll just keep this in here. I, I would normally would want to move it out a little bit to the right. It just looks way too steep. So I like to have it mathematical. If it isn't mathematical, you've got to use artistry. I use specific candles. I would then go to this candle right here. 
as the next one, and that takes me to the end of December. All right? So you've got a little time. All right, with that said, that's the US dollar, uh, Japanese yen. Oh, I wonder if I can do BP. BP? Do I have a no? Yeah, I made a peak E, sharp pullback in the weekly, pulling back below the left side low. Whew, not so good. And there's your, this is a peak C. Yeah, this is not acting very well at all. It's trying to form some kind of base. There's never an H. So after a G, you just do the alphabet. You have to go back and see whether it's an alternate count. And A, B, G slash C, and it goes to a D. Okay, so that's a D right there. Yeah, the pound's trying to form some kind of a base. Uh, let's get back to our story. I want to see if that inside track, we have inside track propellant zone work. Yep, it did. There it is. It went under it, pulled, reversed back up, and now you've got a leg peak in the bundle chart. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. This portion of Trade What You See is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Yes, it's straight what you see um, time, but no, it's Basil Chapman sitting in for the hour that uh, Larry would be here. We're looking at Humasite Inc., U H U M A, 
And dude says, good afternoon, Basil. If you would look at humor, waiting on FDA phase three approval, rejected once for housekeeping and paperwork long and may pick up more. It looks like a bottom. Okay, let me uh, let me just talk about that. But I had a really good friend. Well, I should say at one point it was, it was a, a good friend because I saw him quite often, but we weren't buddy, buddy, buddies, except when we saw one another. Um, and I hadn't seen him for years. And suddenly I saw him at the Whole Foods. Uh, at, uh, I'm now talking <laughs> maybe five years ago. Um, and... Uh, and that reminded me that he well, he's a physician and he was invited by the uh, to become part of the FDA, went down to Washington, he's from the Boston area, Newton, where I live. Um, and I remember him telling me that he couldn't believe how many times companies put in, not millions, not tens of millions, but sometimes even a billion dollars into a new product and what they specified for the FDA was their target. On the way, they kind of got lost. And when he had to look at the approval, they had a fantastic drug, except what they had written down, how the lawyers missed this or didn't, he couldn't believe it, absolute negligence. What they specified was their prime objective was not what they did even though they had a fantastic product and they had to fail them or they had to give them a, 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 some kind of a delay or whatever it is to re, whatever rewrite. And he couldn't believe that they would make some mistakes like that, but they did. Anyway, I just thought I'd get that out the way uh, from what Leah told me. And now what we go to is humor is a symbol, uh, humor site, Inc. Uh, I don't know exactly what they do, obviously, in Biotech 451 right now. Up eight cents at 451. Look, I've drawn in just like I did a few moments ago. Remember, I drew in this pattern. It's a, a pattern is a pattern. You remember, we are, we are human human beings. We have uh, this is a price point of human a moment in time, a freeze of a moment in time of a human consensus, right? So look how this trend line, the Chapman Wave Inside Track. Worked as a propellant zone. If you pull back sharply under it, it become a repellent zone. All right. So that's uh, this is on the way up. This is on the way down. So I'll use exactly the same technique. So here we are. It's trading at uh, five dollars and forty fifty cents. But look how it keeps making lower lows. It doesn't make higher highs. It really more like make, it has parallel highs in the six oh six tennis area, six oh five. But look how many lower lows it makes. So what I'm going to say to you is, when I look at biotechs, you can look at as much as you want on the tactical side. It's the FDA. It's all the other things that make. It. Look at this. This is so. T I would have looked at this and said, "Whoa, this looks like a biotech." Why? Because biotechs almost always have a big stem to the upside. The wick. The shadow, and then the price is always much lower down. This just looks, and, and years ago, I used to say, gee, it looks like uh, the biotech companies every month had a big spike and a pullback. It looks like they pay their employees with options or something because the price is down at the bottom, but you have these huge spikes on a weekly basis, little thin wick. Well, that's what it looks like right here. So I don't know about the uh, uh, phase three approval, all I can say is that this so far is is holding. What I will tell you is that from the movement that it has on a daily basis, if this had to spike, it, the high today is 457. If tomorrow it spikes to 460, oh, you already have some and you're looking to pick up more. I have a trading position right now. Keep your core position. It's making lower lows. I wouldn't add to the core position. But as a trade, if it has to pop, I grab some, put in a very tight stop because that bar, you can see the green bars. When it's green, it moves away from the bottom and it's, it, it remains green for the, well, the green bars remain green for most of the bar and they might have a wick. So I'd only have a trading position. Grab it as it's moving, have a, have a trading stop and just, Take some off as it's riding up and raise your stop. And if you've got a little bit left the next day, just keep it. That's the only way. I can't get into FDA stuff. Nobody really can. You never know when that's going to be. I'm saying to you, if this closes under four, it's going to probably test the pink nine period moving average of 3.95.
I, I, I can't do more than that because we're subject to the whims and fancies of announcements. I'm <laughs> sorry, I can't help you. Okay, I want you to look. Here we go. Wheat, that's wheat. Um, has a leg A. There's the same trend line that we're looking at. It can't get out of its own way. If wheat trading at 562.5 is able on a closing basis to close above 566, no, let's make it 567 any day, then 576 would be the next level that we'd look at because it'll be breaking resistance. That'll be important. And you've got the dreaded H successful because it never took out the left side low in the weekly chart. What's the dreaded H? Let me do this real quickly. I don't want to run out of time. I've got a lot to do. Uh, in my, I look at three core patterns, straight up, straight down. That's one. Cup formation, that's two. Arch formation, that's three. A mix of one and two and one and three. Straight line down. Arches over, fails at a peak A or a B. Look how many times it fails at a peak A. If it takes out the left side low, it can go one to one to the downside. If it holds, it can make an arch, a second arch formation, like a lowercase h, goes to a lowercase m. We saw that in the chart just a little while ago. But if it can close above this arch high for two out of three sessions, Usually it fails at a PB. If it can close above it, then you all of a sudden have a cup formation saying you can go to the next highest peak on the left side. This hasn't done that on the weekly basis. You would have to close above. There's a continuous contract, so that price might change. 617 and a quarter, the high of the fourth week of the 4th of October. Does that two out of three times? The next thing will be to fill in this gap all the way on the 21st of June to 656. That's the way I would look at it. Does wheat. Now we go to soybeans. Soybeans trading down uh, six at 992.5. And Look at this arch, goes to like an M second arch, even a bigger one. If this takes that 976 support, watch out. That's a big problem. There's your lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m. It's done that once before and failed. Uh, it better hold this time. And the monthly charts are very ugly in soybean. Let's go to corn. Uh, continuous contract peak A, peak B, hasn't made a leg C yet in the weekly chart. Horrible chart in the weekly chart. It did an arch formation. It's held successfully at the 384 level. So let's look at the daily. So the daily is much, much better. It's making that cup and handle. Remember, we looked at Bitcoin with a cup, and he has your handle a little deep, but that's okay. All I can say is at 432, uh, 430 right now. Um, if it's able at any point to push above, just it doesn't have to close, just push above 435, that'll be really good action, solid leg C, and it should go quite a bit higher uh, after that. That's corn. I'll be right back. Puzzle Chapman sitting in for the hour of Larry's show. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, Basil Chapman here, Larry's out. Um, so look at the arch formation. There's your peak D, I did use a phantom C, but we got to a D at the exact high today, the high of 5957.75. And then look what happened. The nine period moving average went under the 14 and it went pink. That's a negative. So it went pink and look at that slide and it's still pink. Look, the bar could rally sharply from the 58, uh, just about 80 area to the 59.20. And yet that pink nine period moving average inside there is still pink. And that's just to say that this market is not yet ready to turn up until that goes green. Beautiful indicator, just a beautiful indicator. And um, look what happened to the trend line. He has the trend line. That's the Chapman Wave inside track, repellent, pro the propellant, and now it's a repellent zone. So 59.10 is going to be 59.08 to 59.10 is the new resistance, strong resistance. Okay, I thought I'd just go through those because it's live. I want to show you live how this acts and we just saw it. So now we're looking at this cup and handle pattern in uh, corn, and it says if it can break into the 435 area, that's going to be very positive. All right, and so far the 9 is very strong above the 14. It looks like it's going to do that. How about we go to, um, going to go to Coco? CC, senor. We've got CC trading very nicely. Here's another cup and handle. It's trading at 8,582, up 19. And here's your beautiful, this is the large rectangle formation that if it comes down very sharply, it can go back to the previous high, like a flagpole, and it can make a peak A, a B, a C, a D, just on, just under previous high or just above, and then you've got to be careful. Well, it's actually gone to an E, and yet it's walking the nine period moving average beautifully. Monthly chart had a huge single leg A. This is one of the biggest moves I've seen um, in anything going going to a, a single leg A in the monthly chart. Um, it pulls back, has a big rectangle, a large rectangle, and now it's trying to make higher highs and higher lows. And it says that if Coco at any point can get to uh, this high right here, this is the continuous contract, so that price might change. Nothing changes other than the price, but the high of the week of the 14th, 19th of April of this year at 9358, if it can go to 9360. That's a really good sign because it starts laying B in the monthly, and that says... Coco over the period of going to 2025 should go to higher highs and still go to a leg D. Wow. What about coffee? KC. Uh, KC's got a leg F. 
could be what we call a chap wave instant restart in the monthly charts. I always circle that after D within three bars. If it goes to a higher high, you have an alternate count. So this is coffee, continuous contract, leg in, leg F in the monthly, leg E in the weekly chart, leg D. Objective is to get to a D and it's gotten to a leg D at 293.50 up 12.20 in the uh, daily chart. But all the technicals are very strong. This should go higher. Key supports between 280 and 275. I wanted to go through some of those. I could do others, I, I, I guess, but uh, I think that's fine. Oh, the high-grade copper. High-grade copper right now. High-grade copper. Oh, a little bit of a rally. It's actually up point zero zero one at 4.143. It's just acted terribly. It's been a hint that things are not quite kosher all the way around. Um, look, there's a dreaded H testing for the th one, two, Three, four, five, six. Uh, for the sixth time in uh, in three months, four, uh, July, August, September, October, November, four months, that it's tested the 200 period exponential moving average and the technicals are not very good. So I'm a little worried. That's one of the things that said to me, you got to be a little careful. High grade copper is not doing that well. Oh, you got to be careful. Okay, the question came in and I missed it. Old school, go down, go that, go that. No, 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 no. Oh, 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 I've got to show this. So I used time measurement. I use, I mean, I got a plethora of techniques uh, built up over decades and decades. So this to me is really important. The high that was made in the Dow, this is uh, called Chapman Wave Dark News Index. Usually it's based on yields. I, I think I have no choice, but I have to put a little bit of a, a thing here because the heels are at highs. So I'm just going to put this in, but really it's not the not my characteristic that I look for. So I look at internal lows and in, uh, residual lows, internal highs and residual highs. And what that means is like you have an earthquake, but then you have an aftershock. Sometimes the aftershock is less, sometimes it's the same, sometimes it's greater than the earthquake itself. But it's called the aftershock, and that's what I like to look at. So I've had double tops and double bottoms with the internal high and then the residual high. Um, even the last one we got beautifully in November with the internal low and the residual low and a huge move to the upside. It's very seldom that we've not had an internal high and a residual high. In fact, I'm going back here. Um, no, I don't see it. Very, very seldom. Do you have just that one spike to the upside and then it's all over? So I'm looking at this and saying this is a little bit of an aberration. The nine period moving average is still very strong. You had your chapter wave inside track repellent zone, then it became a propellant zone. Then we went sharply above. That would be the area of 42,000 right in there. So let's just say 42,600 area will be really important if that's taken out in the next week. But most importantly, let me show you something. The high that was made right there, that was on the uh, 20th of March. And the high that was made on the 18th of July, that exact measurement is what I've shown to my subscribers of opening call. And I've shown it here at TFNL, my show, the Tiger Technicians Hour, so many times. And I said, we were down here. And I thought, I don't know. I said, I don't know. I've got the 11th. We're down underneath the uh, inside track. Propellant zone is back to being a repellent zone. Can we go to a higher high by the 11th, a month's time? Less than a month when I actually was looking at it in greater detail. Well, 11, 11, 24 was the exact time sequence of a high from that March to July period to this July to November the 11th. Well, when, what was the high? The high was right here on the Dow, on the 11th. So I have to respect that and say it's one of my techniques. My major technique is the 200, is the 14 period, the nine period moving average being over or under the 14 period moving average. Uh, green, positive, pink, negative. So far, it's still green, even with today's decline. It's had just days and days since that high. It hasn't had it, an up day, in fact. Even today is down, 124 in the Dow. So I have to respect that. But my other techniques are saying, 
you know, you're going to have to wait to get the cell signal. They haven't even got an official cell signal, let alone a cell mode, which means you're definitely going to go blind. Um, all I can say is I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning it, but let's just go back. Let me go to the chart right now. Look, there it is. Oops, I went to the wrong chart. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Jackson sitting in for Larry Pizzavento. This is 1.50 p.m. On Wednesday. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, WR Berkeley, Coy, is that what I see? B R K B R U K L E Y L E Y. Cool. Uh, cool. Okay. So this is w, uh, WRB trading at 60.39, up 20 cents. So monthly chart, leg C, weekly chart, peak A, A, uppercase on the way, A, B, C, D, E, looking very good. The last one, oh, yep, that's right. So let's go A, B, C, D, pulling back, making a cup formation. Oh, it's having a little trouble there. Okay, so what I would do is this, and I'm not sure whether you want a, um, you get out of any copper stocks. Wow, let me just do this quickly there. So WRB, I'll follow this up, Mark, tomorrow, but right now it's walking the line period, moving average, but it's not showing any support. I would say if it closes, it's at 60.40. A close on a daily basis below 59.35 says just be a little careful. If you are long, take a little bit off. If you aren't long and you're waiting to go long, I'd wait. 
What you really want to see is 61.35, so it can it can tackle the 62-ish area, uh, most recent all-time high. But so far, it's making the cup. It hasn't gone enough for me to say a cup and handle. More important, it's got uh, lower highs and higher lows. You can see it's this wedge pattern. So all I can say is it's acting really well, and I like the weekly chart. I love the monthly chart. I would not get out of it. I'd get out of a little bit if it goes under 59, say 30, something like that. Just a, just money management. But right now, if you want to get in, just wait a day. I'll look, I'll look at it again. I'll make a note right here to look at it in my show tomorrow. Uh, okay, next question was copper. Let's go to FCX. FCX, I'd be really careful. It's just not acting. It looks like uh, um, it doesn't look at SCCO. SECO. Um, oh, would I get out? You know what I'm going to suggest uh, about the copper? Take a little bit off. I don't think it's going to do anything drastic between now and to Friday, but take a little bit off. You can always add it back. Just have a little precaution here because it's gapped down and it's really having a tough time. All right, with that said, I'm going to say have a wonderful rest of the day. I do see the market trying to get back a little bit. We'll see what happens with Steve the